This is a GE radio manufactured in 1959 and it is a model P805A. There's the circuit board. Doesn't look like anybody's been in it, which is good news. And now I'm going to put power on this thing and see what happens. Okay, I've got power, 9 volts, hooked up to this. And when I turn this on, I don't really hear anything. But we can hear it clicking. Now, turn this off. Let's see if the oscillator is oscillating. Turn this on. Got a working radio. Said I know. Tune it to somewhere off about the middle of the band, but off a station. Turn that up all the way. Well, I heard it click, I think, in this speaker. Yep, it appears that the oscillator is working. Okay, I've got this radio on. I did some poking around. The signal tracer is on RF. Well, we heard the oscillators working, and also there's a signal somewhere in the radio. So I decided I'll start measuring some voltages, and this is a partial diagram of this radio. And I decided to start right close to the volume control, which is the second transistor to the right and I'm going to measure the voltages there. I'm going to start right here at 22, the base of this transistor. At 22 says it's right here. Okay, and that's right here. It's supposed to be About 8.4 volts. That's pretty close. Okay, how about the emitter of that transistor? That's 9. 9 is right here. And that's supposed to be uh, 8.5. Yeah. A little high, but still not bad. Take a look at the collector. It says dot 5 volts. It's 23. 23 is right here. And that says 5 volts. 10 times too much. As we saw in the video when I tested the base and the emitter, the voltages were a little bit high, but not too bad. But when I tested the collector, it read 5 volts. So I'm going to check the ohms of that 5 microfarad capacitor that's connected to that collector and the base of the next resistor. I just checked the meter to make sure that it's set on ohms and not to read diodes, 
so it doesn't turn on the junctions in the transistors. And the ohms of this capacitor seems to be around 4,000. Now it's reading through a couple of other resistors, but when I turn the leads around, it still reads the same, so we are not going through those transistors. Now I'm going to replace that capacitor and we'll give it a test and see what happens. Not too good. I wonder what would happen if I changed that 5 microfarad capacitor right at the volume control. Shop Hendrick Toyota of Apex on Highway 64 between US 1 and the new 540 and HendrickToyotaApex.com. Much better, but it whines when I tune it. Let's see what happens when I change that 8 microfarad capacitor all the way to the left. Exceed the credit limit they're giving you. So from the very beginning, they end up making. Fortune. Ah, uh, and what were you suggest? I mean, try. I'm under chapter 13. What were you suggest? I mean, trying to get my credit back online. Well, if you're in chapter 13, the whole goal. Now the radio is playing the way it should. When I tune to another station and back, there's no whining at all. And that capacitor that I changed out, all the way to the left there, the 8 microfarad capacitor, that is the AVC capacitor. Here are the three capacitors that I changed out. And there are two more electrolytics that I haven't changed yet. They're of a different manufacturer and seem to be just fine. But generally, now you see why when you get an old radio like this or an old tube type radio, you just automatically change out all the electrolytic capacitors. But I thought you'd like to see the symptoms of what each of these bad capacitors did in the circuit and how they affected the circuit. Thanks for watching.